Evo. Oh god, yeah, I, I can't do the cringe moments. Plus, the I'm mecca scared. of the fighting game community. A tournament series so legendary, just saying its name conjures up images of glorious victory, crushing defeat, and of course, the highest levels of hype. Download complete. Super magical pixel! Don't With EVO 2017 now behind us, we thought it was only fitting to look back at the tournament's illustrious 15-year history and relive some of its most unforgettable stories. These are the most iconic moments in EVO history. Wow. What does EVO stand for? Between 2001 and 2010, Justin Wong was the undisputed god of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. His dominance Evolution. was unprecedented, cementing his status as a favorite in the North American FGC. Justin's nine-year reign appeared to have no end in sight. But that all changed with the release of Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Part of his decline was his stubbornness as Justin stuck to a relatively weak team and his dogged devotion to it eventually cost him his crown. Walker, your new Evolution 2013 champion. At EVO 2011, he finished third. In 2012, seventh. And in 2013, second. Even Justin's most devout fans began to question whether he would ever reclaim his Marvel vs. Capcom EVO title, as he fell again and again to familiar rivals. Filipino champ dominant fashion. But at EVO 2014, a chance for redemption presented itself. In the top eight, Justin had the opportunity to reclaim the MVC throne and exact revenge on the very usurpers he had conceded it to. His tear started with EVO 2013 champion, Job Flocker Figueroa. It's gonna be really hard, 13 seconds on the clock, but it not, might not even matter, he got the hit. Breeze, put your hands up. And out, Flocker's the one that has to make something happen. Wow, that was classic oh. Marvel 2 foot. I got a right flashback there. right there, yikes. Yeah. That was a classic Marvel 2 foot. Oh, Nine seconds. Up. Nine seconds. Oh, oh the tempo oh, change. Beautiful. And Justin Wong advances to the winners. Fight. Next was EVO 2012 champion, the controversial Ryan Filipino champ Ramirez. Uh, this is not a good look for champ. When you have dominance like this from Justin Wong, and you have the crowd behind oh, you. Filipino champ wouldn't roll over. Flocks. And he's avoiding the X, but it ain't gonna be enough! Good catch! What a comeback! Round three was hotly contested. Oh! Filipino oh champ, God. we had that comeback last night! The amazing comeback last night! But this time... The music is such a villain, it's so Oh! Oh, I'm a fan! Facing defeat, Champ pulled back the fourth round. The time looks like it will work out for him, but the full sweet snipe. Caught Justin, probably angling at a fireball, just trying to set something up. It all came down to round five. Beat, this could be it. Go, he go! Did it! Both of them! X Factor! And Justin won! With two of his biggest demons cast aside, the stage was set for grand finals. There awaited Christopher Gonzalez, better known as Chris G, one of MVC3's all-time greats and Justin's toughest foes. This is the one that everyone asked for. They wanted Justin Wong and Chris G. Justin has a chance to be the savior of Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Chris G had had Justin's number throughout the year, so it was set to be a classic, and it did not disappoint. That he needed to come back. That was not like the did by Chris too, but it just didn't work out for him. He's just barely off the mark, and he still had the X Factor up. He really needed to make the comeback happen. Justin Wong, nail number one. One. Oh my God, he's going up on height. Chris G's still looking good right now, but his resources are looking slim. Don't beat his one. Wow, bad tag. Wrong factor. He's getting like that. Oh, it's really close. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be close, a couple more sofas really might do it. He's killing the time right here with the super. Timer scam. Oh Did my god! Who got it? I think Justin got it, who got it? Justin Wong! Oh my god. I press the situation with Justin. Chris G fought tooth and nail to take the third round. coming in. He's actually a dangerous anchor, people don't notice. But can he do that? He's got an exit, he's got an exit. But in the fourth, Justin would not be denied. Too far. Oh, the standing roundhouse! 
Justin wanted more. Justin wanted more. Oh my God. He went for the legs again. X Factor. Oh my God, are we grinding a new champion I here? I think this might be it, guys. As the king returns. As the Marvel God has returned to his throne. I think we're gonna see it. I'm not even gonna knock it yet. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna. Oh my God! He just down it! He takes it! He oh my God, he started rolling around. He just down it! Unbelievable! <laughs> He's back! Who Justin knows what you're gonna do when you're like, throne. avenging when you, losses to When it. you're hyped up like that, you never know what you're gonna do. This motherfucker started rolling around. <laughs> he takes it! He's, He's back! Got it. Unbelievable! He's back! <laughs> Justin had reclaimed his throne, avenging losses to his demons along the way, and the crowd could not have been happier about it. Justin, 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 That's awesome. Justin, Justin, that was the sickest thing I've ever seen. I think if anybody's gonna remember something, it's a lot of moments that you're gonna remember of Justin, but that's gonna be my number one. It's like, he lost Evo, and it was very depressing, then he came back stronger the next year and won that one. It's not every day that you get to see someone redeem themselves on the largest competitive stage, and especially to do it in such emphatic fashion against the toughest Show of him opposition. Rolling again. Let's go. Justin Wong's impressive trail of destruction at EVO 2014 is every bit as unforgettable as the barrel roll celebration it produced, <laughs> undoubtedly making it one of Marvel's most hype and iconic stories. Once again, at the top of the mountain, I can't believe it. The cringe if there's one thing it. you should know about Lee Punko Chungan, it's that he has a unique habit. Whether it's in defiant frustration or passionate celebration, Punko loses his shirt. My God! God! Oh my God! Yeah! While Punko's bare-chested tradition is famous in the FGC, there is one instant that took it to iconic status. And it happened when he ran into Casey Onisan Dillon during pool play of Ultimate Street Fighter 4 at EVO 2015. Realistically, Onisan was no match for Punko, and the first match proved it. Some armor oh, and very possibilities. And Punko just all over here. Oh, again, no cross-up, and you're in big trouble. Not quite in range that, for the toe taps, but... While Onisan landed a few blows of his own, it was a confident 2-0 for Punko. But that's when things got interesting. After the beatdown, Onisan so eyed the crowd, knowing he was on stage with the Rage Master himself. He decided to make his match a bit more fun. He wanted the full Punko experience in all its angry, shirtless glory. And so Onisan got to his feet and baited okay, the, the beast. <laughs> oh, the crowd goes wild! Oh! <laughs> oh, yellow card. Oh, oh, yellow card. Unnecessary pepperonis. GG. Five yards. Oh, oh, my. Oh, my. Internet. He's taking it. Oh. Punko <laughs> simmered. Oh, look at him laughing. Oh, oh, oh. And then erupted. Oh, 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 If Onisan wanted Punko, he got him. Please cut to the game screen. There's a lot of jiggling going on on that stage. Not one sit up. Okay, here we go. Ever done the single sit up? Yeah. Okay, nice uppercut. You're gonna put your shirt on my shoulders? Oh, I don't going think so. in. I don't Loco. think so, amigo. Gansa Amnita. Oh. Can you remove your shirt? Oh, 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 not oh, put his shirt back on and then put both shirts. <laughs> and another lopsided smackdown by the Korean in round two sealed the deal. You're in trouble now. Right down to the wire here for Onisan. Oh, don't ever try that face. again. That, oh, did you see the eye roll from Funko? He did not even want to shake his hand there. This game wasn't a meeting between two juggernauts. And it's not some epic match you can learn from every time you watch it. But it's funny, memorable, <laughs> and it's pure FGC spirit. And that's what makes it iconic. Alex Valle is a legend of the <laughs> FGC. He was the de facto best player in the West during the late 90s, and his skill during that era brought him neck and neck with Daigo Umahara. His influence on the West Coast scene simply cannot be understated. Kelly. Kelly. 
But by 2015, Valle's focus had shifted away from competing towards other FGC commitments, leaving many to believe that his best years as a player were well behind him. That is until the affectionately dubbed Uncle Valle entered Ultra Street Fighter 4 at EVO 2015, where he would defy all expectations, further building upon his already cemented legacy. In pools, Valle found himself matched up against the heavily favored Masato Bonchan Takahashi. Bonchan had placed second at the previous EVO in 2014 and was considered a contender for top eight in 2015. No matter how experienced Valle might have been, there was no way a past his prime old guy could stand up against an elite next generation Street Fighter player, right? Well, we couldn't have been more next wrong. Gen. Not only did the old master beat Bonchan, he took him to school. Chan maybe was waiting for something else. Oh, he's going to be able to get the clap. But, Jim, but this is a problem, and Vi with a very low punish. Ah, right. He could have gotten the wall throw in the ultra two, and that would have done it. Oh! Why not? The elbow to the face! The pitbull from elbow! Alex Vi. Got the counter hit off of it. Not that time, though. Not going to combo with that situation. And again, that's Stan Fierce. He's mauling him with this Hugo. Beautiful facing oh, from Bonchan. The there old man still got it in him. Alex Vai taking the first game off of Bonchan. The second round yeah, was more like of the same. Of With his hair. That, it Next doesn't really matter what your notes what? say. It doesn't matter what your notes say, James. <laughs> it's Alex oh. Valle. You better just knuckle down and oh. fight. All you can do is fight. I've just been really hurting Bonchan. So they just slap him in the face. He's following and it just... Valle's lopsided upset of Bonchan reminds us that the greatness of an FGC okay, god let's... never truly fades, even okay. if his hair color Mr. does. Street Fighter shows he came here to play! And he gets a standing ovation. From Super Smash Bros. Melee at EVO 2016, a highlight that has become a defining moment for the entire Smash community and their journey at EVO. The moment is significant as not just an amazing and incredibly clutch play, but also for the emotional significance it held for Juan Hungrybox de Viedma and his fans. It seemed that HBox was cursed to always be the bridesmaid and never the bride. But during the grand finals of EVO 2016, he finally got his chance to exercise his demons. Back-to-back runner-up in 2014 and 2015, he came into EVO 2016 with a fresh mindset, his best friend and coach to back him up, and more drive than ever to take the melee throne. Sitting on that throne was the Swedish god, EVO favorite and undeniably best player in the world, Adam Armada Lindgren. Uh, I felt pretty good. Uh, had a pretty good 2015 overall, and I'm really, really looking forward to this weekend, and I hope to defend my title. The two had met countless times before, with Armada usually getting the better of HBox and his puff. Yo, Armada! I don't Armada has taken Evo for the first time! Alliance! To add to the drama, HBox was coming from losers, and therefore had to beat Armada in two best of fives to secure the title. The match was as close as it had ever been. You can do it anywhere and, and more than once, but uh, Armada gets it and... Oh, and what a what an answer! Is it still gonna get the kill though? Whoa. Does he get up this? Not yet. Not wow! Yet. It's, it's still a chance. Oh, oh my god, and that's it! It's spite of the beautiful presence of mind from Armada the Giants by the Xbox is I am still out here. to an all-important Game 5. If Armada won, he would take the crown, and it would be another year of falling just short for HBox. If you want to see some more Super Smash Bros. Melee, if you want to see the reset, if this? you want to see it go down to the very end, make some noise for Hungerbox. Here we go, Game 5. 2015? Um, Great 2016? Okay. Hungerbox keeping his stock. Yup. These guys are here to play. Oh, Evo. They're they're nice. Nice. Here to play. Armada with the first stop. Jab up smash. All right, what we got? Hungry Box wow. with the empty jump drag. Four airs him. Oh, shit. Raven Deck versus Hungry Box last year, Evo. Right now, 
he's just playing, playing outside of him. Another, another read on the double jump. Got him so bad. So Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I love weak there as a combo. Yeah, that juicy DI here. Oh. Right where he got hit. He was going to be a big for a minute. Oh! He just runs up and does it. The Swede looked in control, and he was set to slam the door on the Florida native's hopes once again. That's when HBox came in clutch. Not but he gets hit! He gets that, that could be it! Ah! Oh, the oh, the oh, oh, to reset the bracket! To reset! Meet the double jump! Wakes up the air dodge for Amato! He's gotta play one more set! Despite being down a stock and at nearly 100%, HBox managed to take out Armada twice, taking the final stock with the rest heard round the world. The shock on HBox's face and the roar of the crowd <laughs> tell you all you need to know about how unlikely the comeback was. Nobody gets hit! He gets that, that could be it! Ah! Oh, the the to reset the bracket! The reset. The reset. Meet the double jump! Even with that amazing play, HBox's work wasn't done yet. He might have reset the bracket, but he still had to beat his rival once again in another best of five. If he didn't close it out, it would all be for nothing. But HBox would not waste his opportunity. Well, whatever, it bounces out. Oh, oh it goes, wow! <laughs> Delivering on the promise of this set, just because he crossed it for it's so, so powerful. Yeah, just like that. Presses all his jumps. Oh, he gives a ledge. Ballsy uh, fastball there to, to to sort of steal the, the ledge from. So it's one to one now. The damage he's getting off the gun. Double jab. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Hbox weathering the storm at 139. I don't think you can crouch cancel uh, <laughs> much later than that. Armada playing the vertical Jeez, game. The music. Crouch cancels into a shine. Not a not a KO. Move. Oh, it's what's he gonna get? Oh, and the oh, run. Yes. Game five. He missed the first rest opportunity. You see it again and again. He but loves that pocket in his jacket. Sky. Yes. They oh. up there. That'll do it. Obama's got one last chance All of your life. energy must go to the skies. He's going to reach in his pocket again, I feel like, at the end of this. Who's here? this? Oh. It's a bad there. This is big. He recovers. Oh, the oh, the the oh he has winner. hand warmers in there. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, my God. It's oh, 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 a Overcome with emotion, HBox had finally achieved his dream, winning an EVO title and taking down Armada in the most dramatic fashion possible. While the reset would probably be iconic in its own right, the fact that HBox actually won it all is what makes the moment embody his two-year struggle and ultimate triumph on the grandest stage Melee has ever known. The reset is dramatic, unbelievably clutch, and overwhelmingly emotional, making it not just one of Smash and EVO's most iconic moments, but one of the most inspiring stories in all of esports. All I can think about is I see Sometimes him like celebrating, but the one who lost is just up there like a long way. It's top it's like, eight for Super Street Fighter uh, 4 Arcade Edition at EVO 2014. And Lee Infiltration Sion Wu is playing Eduardo PR Balrog Perez in the loser semifinal. Winner takes top three, loser goes home. The match was intense from the get go, with PR Balrog throwing haymakers and putting on the pressure to win the first round. He pulled it off. The PR Rock specialty. Puerto Rico's got a lot to be proud of today. But Infiltration quickly adapted, taking confident back-to-back -back rounds to win game one. Oh, and, and that's he... the pursuit. That's why he burned that meter. He threw the fireball and focus canceled it. Dash forward, present, preventing. It seemed like the Korean might be able to deal with PR Balrog's fiery aggression, control the pace, and take the win. But Balrog wasn't going down without a fight. You're going to drop your cover. Okay. I get the cover. Unbelievable. Four consecutive round wins sent Infiltration reeling, and with all the momentum on his side, PR Balrog was grinning with confidence. One match away from securing his spot in the loser's final. Infiltration knew he Did needed I meet to this do guy something, in Japan? anything, to stop PR Balrog. Staring silently at the screen in thought, Someone he dug deep that I did. into I his bag of tricks and pulled out Hakan. Wait, Hakan? Yes, Hakan. Hakan! What the f while the oil wrestler was considered low tier, no one knew how to counter him. Hakan is a hard counter to Balrog. This is a very, very tough fight for Balrog, not one you have to face very often. The crowd is on their feet. They're swooning from this. However, few players on Earth could play him at the high level needed to make this sort of comeback. 
Fortunately for Infiltration, he was one of those players. Couple of tournaments. We will see. Infiltration has tested his patience, he's tested his wits, he's tested his decision making, now he's testing his character knowledge. Even having to deal with the shock of facing a Hakan, PR Balrog wasn't making it easy. The final few rounds were absolutely pulse pounding. Oh, and eats it right in the nose, and we are going to the final round. I think PR Rock tried to do an EX headbutt there. I've got to imagine, nothing came out. Final round, and again, the whole key is just to get away from that oil. Hakan won oil, one of the strongest characters in the game, if not the strongest character. Oh, what a wake up SPD! Using the EX one for the invincibility. The big oil. He knew he was gonna get popped for it, but it's worth it for Hakan. It opens up so many options. That hey, oh, here no. we go. Big damage. Again, using up that oil time. But another great read, air throw from Infiltration. And even these competitors pushing into the limit. Hakan, great anti-air jab. And another incredible air throw. Here's the pressure to get him. No, he's out of the way. The match oh. rolls on. He just oils himself up. Oh, oh, Real oil, man. Risky against it. Oh no! He tried it. Okay, damage here. He's threatening. Back Focus, dash. back dash. Wow, so risky. Just out of range. Oh, trying to bait it out. Whoa, crazy stuff from Pierre Ballard gets away with it. Living to fight another day, but looking a little bit zany. No Goes oil. Over that great no! Block. That's the end. And infiltration with a con knocking out Pierre Ballard. The win lifted the already famous infiltration into legendary status and cemented his reputation as a man who could not only play any character, but someone who would do anything, even gamble it all on Hakan to win. To this day, no other character swap has come close to matching this Didn't one. Didn't some like, Street Fighter player, I think, play like um, or Tekken, some history. panda? I watched some video of like a panda that got played. Do you know what I'm talking about? A great no! That could be it! No, 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 no. Is it! Infiltration with a con knocking out. Wrong true, the Kuma Bauer. player, Incredible yeah. Stuff. Amazing counter pick. Premature pop offs are nothing new in the world of the FGC, but there is one such moment that is so catastrophic in its failure, What'd so say, memorable bitch? in its face palm inducing embarrassment. Sometimes that I in get just horny when I do a lot of damage. It has already become okay. the most famous <laughs> FGC blunder of all time. <laughs> It happened during the Guilty Gear XR Top 8 at EVO 2015, as Ryuchi Woshige Shigeno was taking on Kenichi Ogawa Ogawa for a spot in the winner's final. These guys, no strangers to each other. The match was Ogawa. tight from the get-go, and eventually had come down to a deciding third game. Ogawa went up one round, putting Woshige's back against the wall. Smart, saw Woshige jump up really high, knew the trajectory of the pin. Ogawa was one step ahead. The second the round came down to the wire but Woshige landed a well-executed combo to narrowly take it. Gets caught low again, has to burst immediately. Full meter though, full meter! He's gonna have to use, oh he can't, no, no burst! So no burst. smart, oh my so god, smart. genius! Caught up in the hype of his perceived victory, Woshige popped to his feet and faced the crowd with both hands raised. It's too bad there was still a round left to go. At least he's laughing. Look at that. Oh my god! Well, she thought it was over and stood up, and Ogawa gave him no remorse. The FGC and internet exploded. Exactly what happens. No not celebrate. Oh my god! Take it in. Celebrating, but it's like unbelievable. While will she get more to about him the design up. of Street Fighter V's mechanics? Winning. This infamous mistake immortalized him in the annals of the FGC and Evo. Wow. When it comes to iconic moments, failure can often be just as memorable as success. And as one of the most costly and embarrassing premature pop offs, they're of all filming time, it like there's <laughs> no doubt that this one won't soon be forgotten. Oh my god! We're seeing it! Every now and then, an underdog emerges as the unlikely hero to unexpectedly leave their mark on EVO history. In 2010, it was the brilliance of Bruce Gamer B. Siang, and in 2011, the FGC stood in awe of Noah Solis, the eight-year-old killer. 
for the Melee community at EVO 2014, it was Jeffrey Axe Williamson who propelled himself into Smash Legend by not only playing one of the greatest games of Melee ever seen, but doing so with the most unlikely of characters. Leading up to EVO, Axe had begun making his name by placing respectably at smaller events with Pikachu, who back in 2014 was not viewed as a top tier character. His refusal to adopt a more traditional main and still find success had won him the affection of fans. So when Axe made it into the top 8 at EVO 2014, the crowd was behind him 110%. Standing in his way in the losers bracket was Otto Silent Wolf Bizno, a Fox player known for his technical prowess. Oh, the back air, it's done! And Silent Wolf taking it over left in the big top 8. It was going to be a tough matchup. Not only was Silent Wolf a solid player, Fox is considered the strongest character in Melee, leagues above Pikachu in the tier list. After splitting Battlefield and Pokemon Stadium, their set came down to the very last game on Fountain of Dreams. Axe burst out of the gates. And I kind of like the FOD counter pick for Max because with a player as technical as I can't even tell what the Pikachu's doing. It's just like a yellow ball floating around with a spiky tail. Gets the up air tail spike and I can't even see their limbs. Nice light shield. Not even trying to get shield stab as the shields do get really small. And oh. another stock. Pikachu! Within 45 seconds, Silent Wolf was down two stocks. The crowd roared and started chanting for Pikachu, sensing that something special was about to happen. That trouble doubled extremely quick. The Pikachu champ is humongous here. Oh, oh man. Silent Wolf. We've seen a lot of four stocks on oh. this stage before. But 45 seconds. Silent Wolf might be down to his last stop. Is he gonna get it before a minute passes? Well, let's see. He's right near the edge. Oh my god! Destruction! Wait, that he's, was he's... emphatic. That was amazing. It took less than a minute for Axe to dismantle oh, oh Silent god. Wolf in one of the most brutal four stocks in melee history, producing one of the most electric pop-offs and hype sound bites of all time. Oh my god! Destruction! Hoisting his Pikachu plushie up high, Axe basked in the rapturous cheers of the crowd, an Evo defining image. Mortality, are you watching? Axe's iconic four stock of Silent Wolf stands as a lesson that matchups aren't won on paper, and that success can still be found on paths right. less traveled. Come on, let's relax. Not bad for a man oh in his electric mouse. When the gloves come off, you know a fight is about to get serious. But in the Mortal Kombat 10 Grand Finals at EVO 2016, it wasn't gloves that came off. It was a hat. Oh! Whoa! I don't think we've ever seen that before! But the fact that it belonged to Dominique Sonic Fox McLean makes this story special. Because for Sonic Fox, his hat is more than just a hat. I, I like furs a lot, and then I was like, all right, so I can still play with the hat and tail on and make a new image for myself. By August of 2016, Sonic Fox was the undisputed king of Mortal Kombat. Anyway, as you can see there, look, first place Evo for 2014 for Injustice and MK9. Uh, so he's a furry. Champion. This guy won the very first and that's why people game. are dance gaming. He had taken down just about every big name in the scene. Uncultured. And dismantled Carl Perfect Legend White to prove his status. Jump. It's tagged. It's over. It's over. That was supposed to be his round, dude. Oh my god. And the brutal. Oh just my. because. Make it stop. Just because. Make it stop. Make it stop. He was on a rampage, winning I mean, title I'm surprised there's not more furries at the top of most games. They're insane in games. With the ears. Even in the most intense moments, publicity shoots, or celebration, Sonic Fox was never, ever without his signature hat. But during the grand finals of EVO 2016, something was different. His opponent, Syed Tekken Master Hashim, would push him further than anyone else had before. Oh, and he gets boy. the NJP, that's exact- Oh no! Wow, that was a Christmas miracle. Oh man, that was so close. He got the NJP for the kill combo, but man, you cannot get nervous on a stage like this. The series started with Sonic Fox's Cassie Cage against Tekken Master's Devora, and as everyone expected, game one was all Sonic Fox. Solidifying his lead, Sonic Fox is sitting ugly right now. And again, Peter Burn, that's gonna do it. 
Tekken Master switched to Kotal Khan in game two, and that's when things started to get interesting. Okay, beautiful work, Tekken Master, staying on top of things. And now maybe it's time for Tekken Master to take advantage of it. He has a lot of advantage there. Oh man, he's staggering these party crushers Again, so well. Will he well. go for Chip? Will he get Chip on this? I and he does, tying things up here. And look at Sonic Fox. That's the first game he's lost today, am I right? You are right. Okay. He was 3-0 against Ayate. Right. Even when Sonic Fox switched onto his signature, Aaron Black, Tekken Master continued to make the MK King sweat. Wow, the armor through the command grab. That was perfect timing by Tekken Master. He had the breaker. Oh, oh boy. boy. We could see the round, folks. This we could it. see it. Ugh. Oh, man, and the pop off. Slicing through. Wow, look at this face on this. Look on Sonic Fox's face. Oh. I don't think I've ever seen him make that face. We do before. not see this very much. You don't see nothing at the end. Interesting. The Maybe chip is going to become a huge factor. Oh, no. Hold on. He can, oh, he can, no. he can take it. Get he can take it. He can take it. All he needs is one. Oh, my God. Okazumi, delayed wake up. What's for breakfast? No. Wow. That was the low mix up there. Look at Sonic Fox's face. This, this could be, be it. it. This could be it. No. Oh, man. Sonic, Sonic Fox. Fox. Can he do it? Plus He's frames. Got... He's oh. looking for the EX. It didn't come. I'm covering my eyes. It there oh, it is! The, the reset! The Very reset! Nice! Bracket reset from Tekken Master, and he looks so composed! With the bracket reset and Sonic Fox feeling the heat, Tekken Master didn't let up even for a second. Yeah, you're right about that. He goes Look for it. Look at this, the lead, Tekken Master. Oh, that was the last hit of it. He just didn't want to okay. deal with the meaty. There's the slide. Tekken Master trying to go up 1-0 in this grand, and he's grand gonna do final it. He's set. gonna do it. He's gonna oh, do it. Oh, man. Frustrated and sensing oncoming defeat, Sonic Fox did something no one could have expected. He took off his hat. Oh, whoa! I don't think we've ever seen that before. Dude, he beat the furry out of him. Yikes. We're seeing bare, oh, man. bare headed human Sonic Fox. I thought his brain would be exposed there. It was as if the moment was scripted, like Bruce Lee taking off his shirt in Fists of Fury. The removal of Sonic Fox's hat was a clear sign that things were about to get real. And they did. Could be big. No, the drop again. Drop from Sonic Fox. When do you wow. ever see it? Why meter burn that there? That was interesting too. The back, the back dash. dash. Oh man, the party crasher off of the back dash was gorgeous. Tekken Master trying to get something going. Look at all the meter here, though. Breaker. He has one left. What's he gonna do? Trying to tie things take up. up. Taking up that space. Portal cannot run over that. You have to jump or walk over it. Or use that. He's gonna convert. He's got the lead. He's got the position. Chooses to meter burn. Oh, the train on the fireballs. And Sonic Fox takes the lead in the set. Tekken Master wasn't done just yet. Taking game four to tie the series and putting himself one step away from stealing the title out from under Sonic Fox. Again, uh -oh. the damage reduction told him out there. Emergency. Sound the alarm. Sonic Fox. But again, plus frame. Oh, emergency. But now he has bar. What will he do with it? Will he use it? He goes for damage! The damage! Oh, man. The oh, damage! The block! And it is all tied up. 2-2, Evolution 2016. Look at these players right now. This Kinda is unbelievable. Scary. Nobody's wearing a blue hat. I can't believe it. One last character switch was in order. He finally brings out the secret. Well, no more dilly-dallying here. So, I, Alien? Right. When There's the fuck did this get at it? in the corner. Got it. Yikes, a heartbreaker here. Overhead. This what? I love Lucy. What are we gonna do? The block. It's time now for okay. Tekken No, the nah, big that mess. was a mistake it, here. It was. We're, we're he, right back into the corner. Look at this. Oh, we are seeing oh, no. some problems out of Tekken Master. It's he's a heartbreak. Missed, he's missed punishes. He's missed combos. Yikes. He has to make a big recovery immediately. He's got the damage buff oh, out. The throw that alien looks so ugly. I won't lie. This is the head is way too small. Here. The alien. Oh man, Tekken Master with barely any health left. There it is. That Sonic Fox. Is the celebration, Sonic Fox, just like that. Sonic Fox back on. erupted to his feet. He was the champion. As for the hat, it lay on the table where he had left it. A symbol that Sonic Fox had been pushed to his limit and emerged victorious. Wow. Since then, Sonic Fox has remained a nearly unstoppable force in the world of Mortal Kombat. And no. Okay. Um.